Good afternoon model fans, welcome to another edition of Cookie Monsters Model Corner. Hope everyone's staying safe and well during the pandemic. Today I've got another nice delivery that I've been uh, waiting for a while. Um, these came out and the prices just went sky high and I just couldn't bring myself to spend the money on on a truck. Uh, I'm not really a truck collector. Uh, I did however spend some time in Australia and I was fascinated by the large Kenworths and road trains they had out there. Uh, in particular in the quarry I worked in uh, there were quad side tipper road trains coming in and out so that's what I would really like but unfortunately unfortunately uh, they haven't yet been modeled so the next best thing for plant guy such as myself would be the dolly and swinging swing wing low loader or float as the Aussies call them so this came up at auction and I got it at a good price. As I say, I'm not really a truck collector because collecting trucks, there's so many of them, it would be starting a whole new a whole new obsession, opening a complete new can of worms. Uh, my first love is earth moving equipment, so I managed to refrain this long but yeah uh, love these huge Kenworths in Australia and uh, really fancied one and uh, when I seen one of them at a local model show uh, I was blown away by the detail that uh, Drake had put into this model I just had to have one so once again this is a second hand auction buy and I have no idea what I'm in for it could be pristine it could be damaged with parts missing so here goes nothing upside down that won't close again Got to have a look at the box just before the model. So yeah, it's marked as a T9000 in white by Drake with Kenworth truck. Drake being the float or low loader. loader. And hats off to them for commissioning these beautiful models. Nice box with an embossed logo. Camera won't pick it up, but nice little touch. So yeah. Wow. Straight away. Good grief. The in intricacy of the detail. It's pretty gobsmacking. I can see why these things make such strong money. Adjustable jack legs with pins. You have a swiveling fifth wheel pin on the dolly. It's actually quite heavy little unit too, surprisingly. Every little bracket. Oh no. That appears to be glue or parts are missing. Hopefully they're in the packet. But yeah. Every little detail you can see the nameplate. Drake Trailers Australia. I believe we have pivoting bogies. You have the airlines, which obviously must plug into the float itself. The bogies, 
pivot sideways and longitudinally. I'll just put the camera on the tripod so I can use both hands. Bear with me. So yeah, the buggies pivot that way and each little axle unit pivots side to side. So always stay in contact with all type of ground. The detail on these, yeah, it's pretty astonishing. Some intricate mudguard brackets. I assume they're, yeah, of course, they're brake lines running to each bogey unit. You see the um, do not overtake turning vehicle signs. Incredible. So I'm not sure. Yes, I see here suggests to me that perhaps this swings out. Ah, I see. So the bogeys slide in and out like that. Incredible. Wow. Yeah, that's incredible. The airlines have a bit of flex on them, which pull this, pulls them back in. But you get the idea. Wow. There we go. See if it clicks into place. Pretty much. Yep, incredible. So that is the dolly unit. I'm just not sure what's missing from the top of it here. Some quite messy glue has been used in the past to glue it glue it in so hopefully I can find whatever was missing but yeah I'm gonna move on to the next section the truck itself wow Those airline detail is phenomenal. I don't know where they've sourced those little coils from, but they are fabulous. It really is astonishing detail. Astonishing. Fifth wheel plate. Positionable swivels. You can see the very most rearmost differential housing. And of course, in Australia, most stuff runs on big steel springs because the terrain is so incredibly rough and the distances are so vast that airbags would give too many problems and leave a truck stranded an awful long way from help. Some fantastic drive shaft detail between the two axles. Fantastic transmission detail. And again, drive shaft from the transmission to the axle, central carrier bearing. And then we have the sump of the engine and interestingly the front leaf springs. There doesn't appear to be 
steering function, surprisingly. Just afraid to push it too hard. There is, however, quite an intricate suspension detail included. Maybe you can see that. That's fantastic touch. Very nice. Wow. I'm not sure if it steers. Oh, it does. Yeah. I just wasn't pushing hard enough. I'm afraid to break it. So it does indeed steer and have front suspension detail. So the next thing I'm seeing here is what looks like another pivot on the base of the bull bar. I've seen the trucks in Australia with the bull bar pivoted forwards to allow the, the bonnet or the hood if you're in America. I think the Aussies call it the bonnet, same as us. So I'm assuming it does indeed, that pivots forwards. A fabulous grill detail, lights, nice little Kenworth logo. And I'm assuming Fantastic. Wow. There's your nice, nice red Cummins, more than likely. Again, I believe they, you can spec your Kenworth with Caterpillar or Cummins. Don't quote me on that. It being red, is Cummins normal color. So you have radiator detail, intercooler pipes, exhaust pipes, steering box, T908, Kenworth logo, and lovely exhaust stack, heat shield, perforated. Incredible. Yeah, completely blown away by the detail on this truck. There's your ice pack. Of course, in Australia, it's exceptionally hot, so they all run large external air conditioning units. So that's what this guy is. Yeah, absolutely blown away. I've just seen the cab door also opens. Fantastic. Aerial, horns, twin air filter intakes, twin stacks, sleeper cabin. And I'm quite pleased to say the truck appears to be undamaged and complete. So oh, that's a relief. Nice little plate. 908 can. Uh, the camera won't, won't quite focus on the, the detail below. Queensland Sunshine State, incredible. I actually can't read that with my naked eye. I'm blown away that they have been able to print that in a legible format on such a small scale. That's astonishing, that is without a doubt, by far the smallest lettering that I've ever seen in any model. And just to give you an idea of how small this is, there's my giant thumb. I mean, we're talking fingerprint small. Please excuse my dirty hands. But that's just to give you an idea of the scale. <laughs> yeah, that's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Blown away. Well, that explains why these things are making such incredible money. So, yeah. <laughs> that has really, really astonished me. 
Queensland, of course, my state in Australia. I worked in Queensland in 2011, 12. Fabulous place. It was really nice to have that little momentum. So yeah, delighted with that. So that's the truck. That's the dolly. I assume I have to Yep, push the lever to let it engage. B the actual float itself. And what a beast it is. So yeah. I already see lots of pivot points on this unusual trailer. I seen these when I was in Australia and it's something completely unfamiliar to European UK shores I'll not put any force on it just in case there's a little locking pin on the rear use both hands here to see oh there we go wow So there you go, a variable width, low loader, Australian float. On the front, you can just make out the little pin, and again, a little adjustable height stand, tie down rings modeled on the neck of the trailer. We have on the rear ramps, we have tie down straps and chains for holding the ramps up. And again, we've got more astonishing detail. So I have to focus in with the camera and see if it can pick it up. Warning, stand clear of, not sure, but again, there's the size of that writing. Absolutely astonishing. Some very interesting uh, printing technology they're using. It would be great to see more of the mainstream manufacturers investing in this technology. It really takes the detail to another level. So again, each wheel is on a pivoting trailing arm bogey. Large sliding cross member on the rear. Hydraulic folding linkage near the front. Locking pins, depending on which width that settings you require. Also tie down holes on the corners. And some spare wheels on the headstock. And I just seen some more of that awful glue on the inside. But hopefully that should be hidden when displayed 
uh, we have a screw I'm not sure if that's factory or not or whether that's been a home repair but everything appears complete there thankfully so I think we'll we'll mate this up to the dolly and it really is an impressive model in size mm -hmm. and detail so nice little bag of locking pins and chains ah some little perforated shield or step perhaps off the truck I'm assuming it lives on some of these tanks it must be the far side that's good that's there again some fantastic laser tool to create these components cut them out and then fold them the fact that's a separate perforated metal detail is something else fabulous so i re-secure that to uh i see where it has came from So it lives on that bottom side of the tank. I'll place that there. Then I'm assuming this this little wheel belongs on here somewhere. Ah, and there's the other glue culprits. No, my fat fingers won't fit in there. And there is another air tank brilliant so things are looking up for the missing parts i'll just set the camera down and fit them so yeah got it all assembled and thankfully all of the missing parts were present in the box so as usual i like to do a little comparison so we have the drake float beside uh, an NZG Nodibim model. Um, I'm not sure which, which Scania the pulling tractor is. Eight wheeler, double drive, twin steer with a dolly. Just for a little comparison. But yeah. I'm honestly going to call it. I think this Drake really has set a new precedent in detail. Uh, I'm completely astonished by the detail on this thing. And uh, I'm going to say that. It's probably the most detailed model I've seen to date. Absolutely blown away. If you don't have one of these, you need it in your life. I'm not a truck guy, but this thing is astonishing. I can totally see why they're making the price they make. My advice would be get one before they get any more expensive. So once again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the in detail, in depth look at this Drake model. Uh, drop me a comment. Tell me what you'd like to see next. Also, I'm looking for ideas on what to display on this float. Of course, it will have to have a bit of an Australian theme. 
So tell me, tell me in comments what item of plant you think would look particularly Australian and authentic on behind this Kenworth Drake float. Thanks for tuning in guys. Click subscribe button, click the bell and um, that'll give you notifications when I put my next video on. Thanks for tuning in. Till the next time, over and out.